Good morning. Uh, welcome to our service today. We so appreciate your attendance. We want to thank all of you who are online today. Those of you who are in Corpus Christi and the Coastal Bend, thank you for joining us. I also want to welcome those of you who are in Asia, Africa, Europe, here in North America, Central America, South America, Australia, and the islands of the sea. Thank you so very, very much. And while we are welcoming you, we must welcome all those who are in the sanctuary. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very, very much for your attendance here today. We can't do it without you. Uh, the Bible says this is the day the Lord has made. What do you, do you and I do? We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, yes. We, this is what we want to do. So today, let's stand, if we, you will. And uh, those, there are some of you who may have some problems standing, but if you'll join us standing, then in just a moment, if you need to sit down in just 10 seconds, you're free to do that. But we want those who can to join us by standing, and then we will, uh, we will do whatever we need to do. Brother James is here to uh, lead us in our service today, and uh, we believe that uh, he has something wonderful. And also, we have a, a, a brother and a sister from Israel here today, our brother Richard Hyde and his wife Carolyn Hyde, and they're going to be ministering today. So thank you so very much. Father, bless us uh, as we bless you. Let us receive the fallout, the overflow from our praises that go up and the blessings will now come down. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother James. Amen, everybody. Can we bless the Lord with our voices and lift him up high? Can we give him some praise this morning? Can we say thank you, Lord, for bringing me here to praise your name? Are you ready? Everybody, are you ready? Give him a shout one more time. Come on, put your hands together now. Yeah. Sing it. I want to hear you sing that. Give it everything. Here we go.
How many of y'all know that every knee is going to bow? Every tongue is going to confess that He is Lord. And we believe, we believe, yes, Lord. All right, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Come on, I want you to sing it loud. Here we go. Who can stop the Lord Almighty?
lost the battle. Never lost the battle. Never lost the battle. Never lost the battle. Never will. Oh, you never lost the battle. You never lost the battle. Never lost the battle. Never lost the battle. You never will. You never lost the battle. Oh, you never lost the battle. God, you never lost the battle. You never will. Cause you can do all things. You can do all things but fail. Cause you never lost the battle. No, you never lost the battle. I know, I know. lost the battle. No, you never lost the battle. I know, I know, you never will. I know, I know, I know, God, we believe in you, God. Hell, I know, Oh God, we praise your name. Our great champion, our soon coming king, we worship you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The lyrics of, the, of that song should be in all of our hearts. No matter how you feel about it, the Lord has never lost a battle. It hasn't even been close. The Bible says he's so powerful, when he comes back, he will consume the Antichrist just with his breath. <laughs> Whoa, Lord Jesus. And that's who is for you. If God is for you, or since God is for you, who can be against you? Who can be against you? Everybody who is fighting against you is fighting a losing battle. He can do all things. This song, I said, must have been written by somebody who grew up in the church I grew up in when I was a boy. They, they always said, because we had to give testimonies. You had to testify when I was a kid. If you said you were a Christian, you had to talk about God. Or well, they thought you needed to be saved. They would always say, he can do anything, baby, but fail. He can do anything but fail. Wow. So as we present our prayer requests to the Lord, our petitions, those that, that I know about, I will pray about, and those that we don't, you can pray yourself, and then we'll join you. I heard a number of years ago, Robert Cornwall, we were at a pastor's conference and Robert Cornwall said, when the Bible says the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us according to the will of God, he says, I, I believe this is how the Holy Spirit does it. Sometimes we are praying and we don't know what to pray for. He says, the Holy Spirit says, Father, this is what they, they are saying. This is what their heart is crying. The head doesn't know, but this is it. And so the Holy Spirit, as it were, takes our prayers and says, this is the real meaning of the prayer. So you can take that. You can take that with you. The Holy Spirit is going to make intercession for you. The Holy Spirit is going to make intercession for you. And he's going to do it according to the will of God. I'm so glad that I'm saved. 
And I want you to be happy that you're saved because the Holy Spirit makes intercession for you with groanings that are too deep for words. <laughs> wow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you that you have given us the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is working on our behalf and he makes groanings for the saints of God, the sanctified ones, the set-apart ones with groanings too deep for words. They are too deep to be uttered. And we want to thank you and praise you for each one in this house. Regardless of what they are going through, this is what we know you are going to take them through. And you are making things real and making things known, little by little by little. You are easing pain that some thought was too much to bear. And you are healing. We thank you and praise you for those who are here right now. We thank you for their families, their husbands, their wives, their brothers, their sisters, their moms, their dads, their children, their offspring, their great-grands and grands. We bless them in Jesus' name. And this is what we know. We know that those whom God has blessed cannot be cursed. This is what we know. That no weapon formed against them will prosper. This is what we know. That they are more than conquerors through Him who loved them. We thank you, Jesus, for those who are here. And for those who are not here, we thank you for Patty. We thank you for healing kidneys and eye issues. We thank you for recovery from surgery for Rachel and Ram and Mary with these health issues. In Jesus' name, you deal with issues. You deal with issues. You cut them off. There was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years, and she had said within herself, if I could but touch his clothes, I will be made whole. And she touched you and virtue went out from you and healed her and dried up that fountain. You're an amazing God. You're an amazing God. And we stand in awe of you. We thank you so much, Lord God, as we pray for Basanti and for our dear sister Midge and Luis and Ricky and Rufino. We continue to pray for him and want him to be 100% well. And for Roy and for Shirley, we pray, Lord God, for them. We pray for all of those, Lord God, who, who have this COVID virus who are suffering from this COVID virus. We pray for Lydia, the family. We pray for Danny and Robert. We pray for Heath and Margaret and Misty and Louise and, and the children. We pray for Sally. We pray for Celia in the name of the Lord. We pray for healing. We don't just call their name, for you are the Lord who heals us. We pray for Frank in the name of the Lord. We pray for Pastor Rick in Jesus' name as you heal him also from this COVID in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray for Margaret along with her extended family, even the two-year-old, all of them having COVID. We pray for Martin healing from COVID. And we thank you and we praise you that Matthew has been raised up from COVID. We thank you that Chantel is healed and whole from COVID. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, we give the glory and the honor and the praise to you, Lord Jesus, we thank you in your great and your glorious name. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you very, very much. I would like to just stay here for just a moment. Just welcome all of you again. Thank you so much for being here. I would like to let you know that our young adults are out on retreat. So I know you've missed them in the first service. You've missed some of them in the second service. And they're on retreat at Mole Ranch and uh, apparently enjoying themselves. <laughs> you know, I mean, they didn't come in today, but they'll be in this afternoon. So that's where they are. Um, I also, let me make a couple of, of announcements. We've had several people to pass away. And I want to let you know what's going on. Um, our brother Frankie Collins, his wife and his children were here this morning in the first service. Uh, brother Frankie, a young man here, maybe in his, I'm going to guesstimate, but Brother Frankie's about 50 to 52 or 3, somewhere like that, if he's that old. Uh, he he uh, uh, passed away from COVID. This thing hit him and just wouldn't let him go. And um, so many of us didn't know he was sick. It was just a short duration, about five days. And he passed away, and uh, his service, services, funeral services are pending. We also, of course, you know about Sister Maria, uh, who passed away, and, uh, but it was not from COVID, but she passed away uh, and, um, from cancer. And I always say, uh, you know, we can die with something, but we don't die from it. Right. Yeah. Uh, you may die with cancer. You may die with COVID. You don't die from it because our time's in the Lord's hands. That's what we believe. That's what we hold on to. We will have Sister Maria's services here tomorrow at um, 10 o'clock. There will be a viewing, and at 10.30 we'll start the service. And then, of course, uh, many of you may know, remember uh, Brother Albert Withers. Uh, he used to sit over to, to the right over here by you know, where Brother Ricky is standing. And um, he just, uh, he's had some issues, but he just suddenly left. He and his wife were talking, and they were watching some old movies they liked watching. And, and said, oh, we better uh, go to bed. We have... Uh, church in the morning and uh and so wow he just laid down and he was gone and in about an hour so he, and uh, he had always wanted to go in his in his sleep and uh he went in his sleep not just in bed some people go to go in their sleep some go in bed but he went in his sleep just like he had desired and um also the young man who was hit by a car on Weber and Holly. Um, uh, this is uh, young Joseph Fillmore. Um, did uh, pass away. And um, I'm expecting his dad here, maybe in this service or, or the next service, they'll, they will be here. And uh, um, his service is also pending. Uh, we just want to make sure that we let you know those kinds of things. I think that they are important so that when someone is suffering, that we all suffer with them. That's how it works. Um, I, I know it works like that for, for me. It works like that for my family. And when something happens to you, it happens to us as well. And uh, that's a, what the body of Christ is about. I, um, I was doing this facilitating. You know, normally I'm down there uh, watching people facilitate. And some I give a two thumbs up. Some I give a one thumbs up. I've never given anybody a thumbs down. But uh, I always wonder... Man, what, what are you doing messing up? Well, you know, I understand. <laughs> so um, let me, let's, uh, let's greet our guest. Let's greet our guest now. Can we do that? If you're here for the first time, and uh, this is your first time in the fellowship, uh, would you raise your hand? We want to say welcome to you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Two people. Two people. A third. Oh, oh man, come on. Look, oh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We want to give you a card, and if you'll fill that out, and we want to just uh, get to know you, maybe put a phone number. We'll have somebody call you and say thank you for coming to our service. We also have a gift for you, and we want to make sure that we, we give a, a, a gift yeah, to our, our guest. Also, um, may I ask you a question? This is kind of like oh, maybe a, the, a country setting, right? How did, how did you find out about us? Did somebody tell you? Oh, your son-in-law and your daughter. I'm telling you, all right, man, you got two thumbs up. Could you tell us how you found out about us? Uh, well, Vince and Rochelle. Uh, Rochelle and Vince. 
which one had the, the biggest part? No, 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 I'd better not. Yes, I said, yes, how did you find out about us? Yes, ma'am. Oh, television, wow. That was good. Is anybody else over here? Where was the other hand? How did you find out about us? You've been seeing the commercials what, of my wife? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how you would come. You saw the commercial of my wife. Everybody always says, you're married to a pretty lady. I go, what about me? They say, you're all right. <laughs> that's true. That is true. They say, you're all right. <laughs> so, boy, I know what it means to be all right. Why don't we stand and wave at our, our guests and each other? Just give a good wave. Come on, give a good, good, friendly wave. Hello, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so very, very much. And one of these days, one of these days, uh, we won't have these masks. And you will be able to see everybody's smiling face. Yeah. yeah. I don't know anybody who's, who, who's, who goes around saying, I just want to wear a mask unless they're the, they are a robber. You know, if you're a robber, you might do that. But I ha I've had people say to me, hello, pastor. I go, how did you know? They said, ah, I heard you talk. Or I would know you anywhere. I'm thinking, even with a mask on. So, wow. Uh, one day this will be over, uh, either here or there, but one day it will be over. You know, you know I, I, I'm a very sensitive person to people and their feelings. I, I don't, I don't want to hurt anybody. And I remember laughing years ago at people who were, we'd go on the airplane, and these people all masked up, were just, just a snicker, just laugh, man, what are they, what are they wearing that mask for? And uh, so maybe that's revenge. I wear mine all the time. It's time to give. Yeah. Great to give. Yes, it's time. To, it's always wonderful when it's time to give. And so if you uh, here and you would like to give, um, you, if you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand. That's what we'll give you one if you would do that. Um, the Bible says that, um, that he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. But he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And so what we want you to do is to be, to be a recipient of God's best. Uh, I heard a preacher one time say to his congregation, he said, God doesn't need your money. And then he quickly said, but we do. <laughs> and that preacher was not me. So, so thank you so much for your gift. Now, for those of you who would like to go online, you may go online to CCC Fellowship dot com forward slash give just the give button uh, I, I see a brother's ushers i see a hand up uh, ushers kind of right here hand up needing a yes thank you and uh also you can text your gift by texting 361-386-2565 that is 361-386-2565 and type in the word key words key words for giving instructions. Thank you so very, very much. You're now, may the Lord bless your gift and may the Lord bless you, the giver. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, thank you, Brother Chris. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother James. Wonderful time of praise and worship. Though it was short, we bless you. Uh, we're grateful. Thank you so much. And um, uh, listen, it's my great pleasure to introduce our guest. And you know, I, I don't practice these kinds of things. Actually, I don't practice preaching either. Uh, I, I know a lot of brothers who, and, and, uh, who would preach and they would practice. I, I always thought, you know, you, you can have the praise team practicing, but what if you came into the service and the pastor was practicing his sermon? I don't think we would accept it like we do the praise team. We would think something was weird, but I don't practice these things, so I'm not all so smooth in them. But I'm so grateful uh, that we have the Hyde's back with us. It's been a long time. Yeah. And, uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, when I, I'll say this briefly, as briefly as possible. When we were children, uh, our father was just in love uh, with the Jewish people. He was he taught us that, that we should love the Jewish people and, and that, that we, had, we owed them a lot. And he would talk about uh, just how special they were in, in the sense that God had done a lot of things through the earth. Actually, they were the only people group in the whole world who had a covenant with God. I mean, it's wild. And uh, then the, the, another thing, that um, they were the only people group who had the law of God. That's wild. They were the only people group um, who had charge of the sayings of God, the oracles of God. And so my dad thought that we should uh, respond in kind by recognizing God's hand upon a people. And, of course, I've grown up with that. And then, of course, I've had the Lord speak to me directly that I have been, and you all, all of us, have been um, uh, a recipient of so many blessings that God brought to the earth through them, and, and particularly Christ Jesus, um, the Messiah, the Jews' Messiah, and our Savior, and all of our Savior, uh, Jesus came. And so uh, with that, I'm just so happy uh, that you are here, and I'm happy with what you have brought to us the first uh, service. And so I want just the Hydes to come up. Uh, this is our brother Richard Hyde and his wife, uh, she's, she is a wonderful psalmist and teacher as well, our sister, Carolyn Hyde. So I want you both to come, and now the service is yours until it's not. <laughs> Amen. So, <laughs> bless Thank you, you Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's a good God, isn't he? Jesus loves you so much. I can feel the pleasure of the Lord upon us now. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Yeah. It's good to be here with you. We look forward to this time for, for quite a while, and we're, we're so blessed. We want to share just a little bit about ourselves, but more importantly, we want to share our... Actually, we want to brag on what God is doing in Israel. It's absolutely amazing. But if you could put up that first slide, uh, this, this is actually our backyard, you have to remember the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet. <laughs> uh, but the house was given to us, so praise God. But what you're looking at is the southwest corner of the Sea of Galilee. It's the Golan Heights across the sea. Syria is just right beyond that. To the right uh, is Jordan, and to the left is Lebanon. So we live in a pretty uh, rough neighborhood, but we've got a pretty place. <laughs> if we can go to the next slide for a second. We have five kids, and by God's grace, they all live in Israel. And we have 14 grandkids, uh, all born in Israel. They're Sabarim, native-born Israelis. So we're pretty excited about that. And what a blessing. With, we work with our two sons in the ministry, but our three daughters, I like to say they are building colorful testimonies <laughs> as they return to Jesus. They're prodigals. Uh, <laughs> So you're probably wondering, well, there's this guy from Israel, but he speaks like a Texan. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Well, I was born and raised here in Texas. And uh, I'm from near Chicago. But she got to Texas as fast as she could. <laughs> She's a smart girl. <laughs> we actually, and then we moved from the great Lone Star State 
to another greater Lone, Lone Star State. <laughs> And, you know, if you've called Jesus as your, as your Messiah, you're going to be able to live in the greatest Lone Star State, the New Jerusalem, right? And, and he's going to be the bright and morning star. He's a Lone Star. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. So what, the reason there's a, a state of Israel is because God has been gathering his people from all the places where he scattered us, from the north and the south and the east and the west, and he's bringing us back to the land of of Israel, So that begs the question, if he's bringing us back, why were we scattered in the first place? Well, you see, Jesus came to his own people, and his own people rejected him. Did that surprise Jesus? No, it wasn't a surprise. He knew that would happen, but it was for a purpose. What happened is God blinded the eyes of the Jewish people, and he hardened their hearts so then that the gospel would go throughout the world. Think about what God gave the Jewish people. He gave them the covenants. He gave them the promises. He gave them the temple, all the things the pastor was talking about, that if they would have accepted the Messiah and received him, they would have had the whole ball of wax. But that wasn't God's plan. For God so loved the world, for the gospel to go to the world. He so loved the world that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the, the, their were, eyes were blinded, they were scattered throughout the world, but the gospel went throughout the world. And the focus has been upon the gospel for the last 2,000 years. But has God forsaken and forgotten the Jewish people? As Paul say, of course not, he hasn't. There would come a time when he would take those blinders off their eyes and he would soften their heart and they would be able to see their own brother, Yeshua. And I'm here to tell you that's what's happening now. In fact, when we made Aliyah, we came to Israel 18 years ago. There wasn't an openness to the gospel. People didn't want to hear. They would get upset. But in 2007, there was a change. I remember going to meetings with leaders in the land, and they'd say, Wow, something's happening. There's something different. There's an openness towards the gospel. And it started very slow and low in 2007, and it's been growing. But not just linear like this, but kind of slow and low at the beginning. But then an exponential curve. You know what that is? Where it just explodes. Boom. I'm here to tell you we're past the explosion point. This is so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Jesus said, if you want to know when, in, uh, about when he's coming, keep an eye on Israel. You look for it to begin to bloom and blossom. And spiritually, that's what's happening. It's blooming and it's blossoming. The gospel has gone throughout the world. Have you ever thought about how the gospel went throughout the world? How did that happen? Who was the main person that it went through? Paul. Paul wanted to go into Asia, but the Spirit wouldn't allow him, right? And so he went towards uh, uh, Europe, towards Rome. You know, Pastor, when... when um, Yeshua came into your life. Were you the same or were you changed? You were changed. That, well, that's what happens when the gospel comes into an area. It changes everything. It changes the music. It changes the architecture. It changes the, the society. It changes art. Everything's changed. That's what happened in Europe as the gospel came to Europe. And then it crossed over the, the Atlantic and came to America. It's the foundation of America. It's, it's our foundation, and our love for Israel has also been a foundation for the blessings that we've experienced here. The gospel continued to move west. It crossed over the Pacific, and it came uh, to Asia, to Korea. What do they have in Korea? The largest churches in the world. Thirty-five years ago, I was smuggling uh, Bibles into China, and it's not because I was smuggling Bibles into China, but today there's millions and millions of believers in China, right? And, what's, and it's happening in India as well. You see, the gospel started in this small little Israel, and it, as it began to move west, it gained momentum like a tsunami wave that gets bigger and higher and stronger, and it's going throughout the earth. Right now, it's hitting a people group, and they hardly even realize it. The Muslim countries. Did you know the greatest, the fastest growing churches in, in, in the world are in Iran? The second, the second fastest are in Afghanistan. And we know what's happening there. Boy, do they, do they need our prayer. But in, in Iran, how are they coming to the Lord? Through dreams and visions. Just like Joel said, young men would have uh, visions, old men would have dreams. And they're having dreams of Yeshua. And they're seeing him. 
And so this gospel has started in Israel and has gone all the way around even to the Muslim countries and come back to where it started. Hallelujah. The first shall be last. And this, and Yeshua actually spoke about this. We find this in, in Matthew 14. It says, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. Then what would happen? The end would come. And that's exactly where we are. It's gone all the way around the world. And now it's back in Israel. And those blinders are coming off their eyes. And this is what we want to talk to you about today. It's not a small thing. It's a huge thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'd ask Carolyn just to lead us into some worship now. See, the time is coming. When you will call Israel And you will pour your spirit upon us We will know your law For you will write it on our hearts And we will look upon you whom we pierced And we will mourn when we see Yeshua is the Lord See the time is coming When you will call Israel You will pour your spirit Upon us we will know your law For you will write it on our hearts And we will look upon you we pierced and we will mourn when we see Yeshua, Jesus, whom we pierced, and we will mourn when we see Yeshua is the Lord. Yeshua is the Lord. Yeshua Tadon. Yeshua Tadon. Spend time in you and I wait for you to speak. I will lean on you, for you are strong when I am weak. You do awesome things that I never would have known since ancient times. No light has ever shown like you. It's you, Yeshua, right? That you would part and come down, part the heavens, come down, we'll wait, we'll wait on you, we'll wait, we'll wait on you, we'll wait, we'll wait on you. No one has known anyone like you who parts the seas so we could walk on through. You do awesome things like heal the sick and lame, even mountains quake at the mention of your name. It's you. It's you. That you would part the heavens, 
come down, part the heavens, come down, we'll wait, we'll wait on you, we'll wait, we'll wait on you, oh, we'll wait on you, yes, we'll wait on you. Mechakim alecha, Adon Yeshua. Mechakim alecha, rak ata ui. In kamocha ve'im Adonai. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our King. You are holy, so holy. Holy, holy, holy are you. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Kadosh, 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 ata Yeshua. Kadosh, 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 ata. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy. We wait on you, oh, we'll wait, we'll wait on you, that you would part the heavens, come down, part the heavens, come down, we'll wait, we'll wait on you, we'll wait, we'll wait on you. Pour out your spirit, oh Father, on each one of us here. We wait on you. We thank you, Father, that you speak. Speak for your servants are listening. Thank you, Lord, that you are indeed opening the heavens above this place. Hallelujah. We would like to impart to you some good and encouraging news today. I know if you watch the news, you only see bad news about Israel. But we want to tell you that there is good news. God has not forgotten. He is a covenant-keeping God, and he has not forgotten his promises. And so... 
with that, we want to share with you some testimonies and share with you some things that are happening in Israel. Because of the situation where we are not able to pass out our um, a paper for our newsletter, because we could stand here all day and share testimonies with you, but we, we, we can't pass this out. So if you're interested, Ken and Cindy have some cards, and if anybody is interested, you can just take one of those, put your name and email on it, and then put it in the basket back at our table at the end, and we will pray for you and we'll be happy to send you our monthly updates with good news. It's not political news. We're not doing that. That's bad news. <laughs> we want to share good news of what God is doing. So what is he doing? So maybe you can show the picture with the uh, young men, um, with the media team. There we go. Um, so the young man to my left in this picture is our older son, Ariel. He's the director of Tree of Life, Israel. And our younger son is on the far right, Avi Asher. And then the rest of the guys, Sasha and Eliel and Jordan and Ari and Yoni, wonderful men of God. We uh, are so privileged to get to work with them. But let me, let me just backtrack a bit and give you some history. So in Israel today, you can't just go up on the streets and, and say, hey, Jesus loves you and, and you, need to know, you need to come to Christ or you're going to hell. That does not work in Israel. Believe me, it does not work. It doesn't work here either. You're right. You're right. Condemnation never works. People are not drawn by condemnation. We're drawn by love. And so the problem is many Jewish people, and I put myself in that category because I grew up in an Orthodox synagogue, and I was told as a child that the Nazis were Christians. Now, of course, I know that sounds ridiculous, but... You know, when you hear the stories, and I grew up with Holocaust survivors, and they would tell stories like the train was going by um, and people were, the Jewish people were pounding on the door saying, help, help, help. And the people were in the church and they would sing louder when the trains went by just to cover it up. And so the, you, I grew up with these kind of stories. And so I thought Christians hated me. So that, that's how I grew up. So... Sadly, many Jews today view God through a lens of the Holocaust and can't see the real God for who he is, the God of love. But if you look at our history from Abraham through today, you see how faithful God is. And so that's why Richard and Ariel wrote this booklet. It's supernatural or just remarkable. It explains how God the Father keeps his promises. It's a great book to give to Jewish people. It doesn't talk about Jesus, Yeshua, um, which is an offense. So start off with the Father and with the message of love and then go from there. By the way, he has a son. <laughs> and so this book, what we did was a number of years ago, we, we put some, um, some of the promises and their fulfillments on uh, social media and then bought some ads so they would go out. And within a three-month period, we had 24,000 hits. And we thought, wow, okay. So then Richard and Ariel went to filmmaking school, and they made our first film. It's called Isaiah 53, The Forbidden Chapter. Some of you may have seen it. Young man on the street interviewing Israelis and asking them to read this book. From See, when I grew up in the, in the synagogue, when we would read the Haftorah portion, the prophets, we'd read Isaiah 51, 52... 54, 55, and just skip right over 53, which is the best description of Yeshua in the Bible. It's amazing. And so as they were reading this on the streets, they, they were falling in love with Jesus, and they didn't know it. And so um, on social media, we okay, we got the usual, a lot of curses. We even get death threats sometimes. Um, it's the same spirit Saul had as he was going to Damascus, breathing murderous threats. Please don't hate the Orthodox Jews who are persecuting us. Pray for them that they fall off their donkeys and see the light. That's what we need to pray. <laughs> so the young men, well, it, initially it was just our family responding to the many Israelis who would write in and say, hey, can I meet you at a coffee shop? Um, can I give you my phone number? I, I've got questions about Yeshua. Uh, or maybe they'd have a dream about Yesh Jesus and, and they didn't know what to do with it. So um, 
Yeah, so then it was just the family, but we ended up hiring more and more. And now we have 12 young, spirit-filled, Hebrew-speaking Israeli citizens like us who are sharing the gospel full-time in Israel. And that, that's who these young men are. And we're so proud of them and privileged to get to work with them. So recently, a message was really burning on Ariel's heart, um, the message of pro-life. And now, in English, you have two words for this. You have a spontaneous abortion, a miscarriage, um, which is nobody's fault. It happens. And then an abortion, which is a taking of an innocent life. Well, in Hebrew, we only have one word, hapala. It means both. So Israelis really don't distinguish between a miscarriage and an abortion. We have our own silent holocaust in Israel today. And you would think we would know better as Jews, but we don't. Deception. Yeah, it's deception. So what happened in this, this new film that just came out, it's only in Hebrew with Hebrew subtitles because everything we do for our Hebrew website is only in Hebrew. But um, this, this video it came out about four months ago and we've already had three million views in Israel. And people are responding. One of, the, and we even have a pro-life hotline now. Um, one of the, just an example, was one young man who called in, and he said that a few years ago his girlfriend got pregnant. He wanted to keep the baby, but she went ahead and got an abortion without telling him. And he just went into a depression for years, and he didn't know why. And then he saw our film, and when he saw what what this film does is it explains in kind of graphic, like cartoon style, what happens during an abortion. Like, I don't know if you know it, like they cut off the limbs and the head. It's disgusting. It's, it's like, why? And, and so this young man, when he saw that, he said, now I understand why I've been depressed. This is what happened to my baby. And so he called the hotline and he asked to speak with, with someone. And, he ended up praying to receive the Lord. And this is the kind of thing we're seeing over and over with our videos. People are desperate and, and in fear and, and finding that Jesus is the only answer. There's no other way. And so we would like to share with you uh, a short video from our son, Ariel, and his wife, Shayla. because it's so overwhelming and beautiful to see what God is doing here in Israel. In just the last few months, several million Israelis have heard the gospel and the pro-life message, and God is using it to transform lives. A man named Yaron called us recently. He'd been watching videos about Jesus, Yeshua. He read the New Testament on his own and came to the conclusion that Yeshua is his Messiah and Savior. He even wanted to get baptized immediately and excitedly asked, can I do it by myself? But then he shared an inner fear that is holding him back. How will his wife and his religious Jewish family react? He's quite certain that she will leave him. Our team member, Eliel, read to him the words of Yeshua from Matthew 10 about the cost of following him, including possibly losing one's family, but also the reward of eternal life in him. We never know how people will respond to this difficult truth, but Yagon's reaction was surprisingly positive. He said, these verses are emotionally moving. He also said, inside my heart, I know this is the right thing to do, and I can't escape that. So he decided to move forward with it. We connected him with a local congregation to baptize and disciple him. An Orthodox Jewish lady, Yasmin, called us a while ago. She said, I felt something inside of me urging me to call you for several weeks. She told us how she saw our Isaiah 53 video, and it stirred something in her heart. She'd never heard this kind of message before. She showed the video to her husband, but he immediately got upset and told her to shut it off. Yet still, for several months, she would call at least once a week, and our team member Yoni would answer her questions. Each time they read through different scriptures, especially the prophecies about the Messiah, and she kept asking for prayer in Yeshua's name. At a certain point, Yoni connected her with Hannah, a deaconess of a local congregation who has a similar background. After several more conversations, Yasmin declared, I have decided that I now believe in Yeshua. So I went out and got a full Bible, including the New Testament, and put it on our living room table. In her community, she could find herself in dangerous waters after doing something like this. So that really took a lot of courage. 
Please pray for Yahan, Yasmin, and many others like them, that they would stand strong, even when they'll likely face tremendous pressure from their families, and that they would stay connected with the body of Messiah so that they can grow as disciples of the Lord. Recently, as our team shared what God has been doing through our pro-life and gospel campaign, I started to weep tears of joy. For most people, if they get to be involved in saving just one person's life, it's an experience they'll never forget for their whole life. But God gives the privilege to take part in saving five babies from abortion in just one week, and 25 babies since we launched the campaign just a few months ago. Galia from Jerusalem had already set up an appointment with a governmental committee that gives approvals for abortion in Israel. They approved 99.3%. But then, our ad popped up. She decided to call our helpline, and our counselor, Roberta, answered. Roberta has a burning passion to save lives, and often fasts, prays, and perseveres in showing God's love and sharing the truth, all so that women will choose life. After speaking with Roberta on the very day of her committee appointment, Galia decided not to go, but rather to keep her baby. As if that story wasn't dramatic enough, we also got a call from Yael, who already had an appointment set for an abortion in just a few hours. She was full of anxiety, thinking she wouldn't be able to take care of a child. Our counselor, Renee, told her, Yael, if God gives you a child, it'll give you everything you need to go with the baby. She shared with her how we could also help her practically through our partners. Yael said that she'd think about it. A little while later, we received her decision. She said, Thank you so much. Now all the confusion is gone. I've canceled the abortion appointment. We know that God is doing miracles like these because you're praying. So we'd like to ask for your prayers for wisdom and strength for our counselors dealing with difficult calls at all hours of the day. Please also pray for our two new video testimonies we're about to release as part of our pro-life and gospel campaign, that they reach millions in Israel and around the world and have a deep impact. That's not all. We're also working on several new evangelistic videos, street interviews, an apologetic series, and more. Please pray for guidance and anointing so that these will touch many lives for God's glory. There are so many more beautiful stories of God's redemptive work here in Israel. If you'd like to get all of them, including the ones we don't share by video, then please sign up for our newsletter on our website, treeoflifeisrael.org. Shalom from Israel. And God bless. Hallelujah. Five babies saved in one week. Is it on? There we go. Yeah. Five babies saved in one week. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, when, there we go. Uh, when we, um, when the video went out about the, the pro-life, uh, we had so many re responses from that. We couldn't keep up with it. And we've had to hire more and more young men. In fact, remember Carolyn saying we were excited when we had, um, what was it, 24,000 in three months? Guess how many views we're having today? 45,000 per day. 45,000. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I mean, can you see the, the, just the eyes being opened? Uh, it's amazing. In, in fact, on our Hebrew website, we've had 150,000 visits. That means people are taking an effort to go to the website and to learn more about Jesus. 150,000. We've never seen anything even close to this. It's, it's blowing our socks off. A absolutely amazing. <laughs> so we want to share with you another way that the gospel goes forth. You know, since COVID has begun, we've seen a 50% increase in the amount of poverty in Israel. They say that 30% of the population is at or below the poverty line. So there's a real need for for humanitarian aid, for helping uh, with food. And that's one thing that, that we're able to do. We help to bring uh, groceries to people. We bring hot meals. We bring salads. We give them gift cards uh, for the grocery store. And we're able to do this on uh, a, a weekly basis generally. And so we're making c contact with them regularly and building relationships and bridges so we're able to talk with them. Uh, and... Uh, on one particular day, we saw five Israelis come to the Lord through, the, through these kinds of relationships. And we're seeing that just on a regular basis. It's, it's something that, that, that touches our hearts. Carolyn, you want to share uh, a new way we just discovered for the gospel to go forth? The Lord gave it to us. Yes. So um, 
like we said, we have to wear many different hats. And, you know, we have an extra beatitude in Israel. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be bent out of shape. <laughs> we declare that one. And especially in Israel, we need to be very flexible because we often get kicked out of things. Like I used to be in a blues band. We would sing the blues in Hebrew. I uh, was with three other Russian Messianic Jews. And we did that for about five years until they kicked us out. Um, so just however, whatever door the Lord opens, we're willing to go in and share because it is our passion to see the Jewish people come to faith. Hallelujah. And it's time. So this is the newest way. And this is a, a prayer initiative that started um, this past uh, late winter. And uh, two friends of mine, actually, Dean Bai from Return Ministries, it's an Aliyah ministry, and Dr. John Melinde from Uganda, who I had the privilege of meeting when I was there. And they said that it is time to have a 24-7 altar of prayer for Aliyah and for Israel. You know, Aliyah is so special. If, I would encourage you to visit our website, Heart of God. I noticed they spelled it wrong. It's G hyphen D. People often ask, why do you spell it that way? It's an Orthodox Jewish tr tradition that I grew up with, and it's only done out of reverence for the name of God. That's important. Um, and so, it, but visit our website, heartofgod.org, and, and click on where it says Aliyah, and you'll see all 64 Aliyah scriptures. Read those in one sitting, and you'll see God is really serious about Aliyah because what he's really saying about this message is, he, you know how God sometimes is trying to give us a, a message in the spirit? But like me, I'm sometimes too dense to get it. Um, so he has to give us a physical picture. He's taking a physical people, the Jewish people like me, bringing us back to a physical land, the land of Israel. But what he's really trying to say is one day when that final shofar blows and the new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven and we will go up to meet the Lord in the air. That's what Aliyah means, by the way, go up to God. And we will dwell with him forever. So when you pray for Aliyah, you're actually praying for the return of Yeshua. So it's a good thing to pray for. So this 24-7 this altar of prayer, Dean called me and asked me to take a watch, a three-hour watch. And um, at first I said no, because I thought it was too busy. But the Lord said, take it. And he said when to take it. He said every Wednesday at the ninth hour, which is very spiritually significant. Uh, so from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Israeli time. And, and so I began initially in our home. Uh, I'd have my laptop. I'd set it up and just be at the keyboard and sing in, in the spirit. And, and the intercessors are on Zoom and they're praying. And then the Lord showed me to set up a ladder out on our back porch with that view that you saw and just set the laptop up there and then the people could pray over the land and prophesy and proclaim scripture over Israel. And so we did that for a while, but then a couple months ago, I was in Jerusalem visiting our youngest daughter, Eliana, and I knew I wouldn't get home in time for, uh, for my commitment. And so the Lord said, don't get on the bus, just walk. So, okay, so I started walking and I had my phone like this. I could see the intercessors, they could see me. And we began to pray. And, and one of the first buildings we came to was the Sachnut. It's the Jewish agency, great place to pray for Aliyah. So we did that for a while. Then the Lord said, walk. And this time he showed me, turn the camera out and let the intercessors see what you're seeing. So, okay, so I began walking like that, with the, and um, we were praying together. And I just walked up to a, a, an older man, and it was turned out his daughter. And I just pointed to the phone and said, <laughs> These are Christians from around the world who love Israel. And so well, then one of the intercessors asked them, Can we pray for you? Excuse me. It turns out the, the woman said, yes, pray for my son um, to want to come back to Israel. And so we prayed right on the streets. 
And do you see what this is doing? It's, it's like interactive intercession and evangelism on the streets. And, and that's, that wasn't our idea. We're not that smart. <laughs> it came from God. He told us to do this. So, um, oh, this is a great story. Do you have time to share this one about Moshe? As you can see here, Carolyn is uh, showing uh, Moshe, uh, uh, the intercessors, and they're interacting with him. Uh, and so he asked, so, so do you guys follow the Ten Commandments? And I say, well, we try to. And I said, how about you? Do you follow the Ten Commandments? <laughs> what a perfect segue into the gospel, right? And, he, and so he said, you know, no, I, I, I mean, I tried to, but I, I failed. And I said, well, you know, that's called sin, and sin separates us from God. But God gave us a way out. He sent his son, and, and he has taken our sin. If we give it to him, if we will, will repent. So I was able just to share the gospel with him right there. So we have a connection every time when we, we go to the grocery store here. <laughs> Um, another time something similar like that happened, I was uh, in a town in uh, south of Haifa and I ran into, I actually was passing by a store and I realized I was with the intercessors, but I said, let me just hop in here, I need to renew my bus card. And, uh, and then there was a woman in there, Michaela, so I started talking with her and began to speak and introduce her to the intercessors and said the, when I said these are Christians she said now you remember like I said initially I, I grew up thinking Christians hated me so this is kind of a prevalent feeling you know the history of the church and the Jewish people is not a pretty history if you want to know more about it you can read a book by Dr. Michael Brown our hands are stained with blood it's a, it's, it's a tough book but anyway um, so uh, she didn't want to hear what I was saying, and, but she said the man next door might want to hear. <laughs> so we stood out in the, in the, on the sidewalk and she brought Yaakov out and we began speaking. Well, when I began to share with Yaakov about uh, something from, from the New Testament, normally I don't do that, but um, he just said, no, I, I'm not interested in that. And, and so he went back in the store, but Michaela was watching the whole time. And... At one point, I asked her that same question that Richard asked Moshe. You know, look at the Ten Commandments. I mean, this is what God gave us. And have you ever broken one? And she said, no. <laughs> so I said to her, well, you just broke one. <laughs> you just told a lie. <laughs> and she said, well, maybe a little lie. I mean, you yeah. know. And I said, no, no, but that's the point. That's the point with the law that God gave us with the Torah. We either keep all 613 commandments in the Torah or we have chet, we have sin. And our sin separates us from the Father. And so she began to listen to me and I began to share about why God sent his son. And at one point she just stood there quietly and looked at me and said, where can I get a New Testament? I want to read it. This is what we're seeing over and over in Israel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We don't want to share one uh, more small, short video. Uh, what we did, we went out into the streets of Israel, and we told the people, we're going to tell you about a great Jewish leader, the things that he did, the impact that he had, the words that he, that he said, and we'd like for you to guess who it is. So they're guessing, you know, famous rabbis like Rambam. And one guy, we, you know, we told him, well, uh, th there was a guy 5,000 years ago that, that or 2,000 years ago that fed 5,000 people <laughs> by the Sea of Galilee. And the guy said, wow, he must have been really rich. Who was that, Donald Trump? <laughs> ah! <laughs> In other words, we know nothing yeah. about Yeshua. Yeah. Their eyes are really, really blind. But what's amazing is when they can see Jesus with those blinders taken off, they fall in love with him. And that's what we'd like to share here in this last video. The majority of Jewish people have been blinded from recognizing their own Messiah. Because of events like the Crusades and the Holocaust, 
Many Israelis are disillusioned with God and have a distorted picture of who Jesus really is. What if we could see Yeshua, Jesus, without all the cultural accoutrements? What if we could see him for the very first time? What would our response be? now is the time that God is opening the eyes of his people in Israel like never before. Make a difference. Help us tell his story here in Israel. Hallelujah. We need a, a person like him in our generation. I wish I knew him. Of course, that's my heart for, as well, that, that they will come to know their Lord and Savior. You know what it reminds me of? Remember when uh, Joseph was standing before his brothers and his brothers didn't recognize him because he had on Egyptian headdress probably and Egyptian makeup, speaking Egyptian. They didn't know who he was. But the scripture says that Joseph revealed himself to his brothers and they realized who he was. That's exactly what Jesus is doing in the land today. He's revealing himself to his brothers. You know, my, my son told me, he said, Dad, of all the people that, are, that we're, we're talking with and all the ones that want to know, we're only able to talk to 10% of them. That means 90% of them aren't able to hear about Yeshua because we just don't have enough, enough workers. And what does that remind you of in Scripture when not having enough workers? The fields are ready for harvest, but the workers are few. Beseech the Lord of the harvest to send workers into his harvest. It's his harvest. And so we would just like to uh, encourage you to, to join with us. Even, uh, were you going to talk about 10-2? Yes, I just want to present you all with a challenge. A challenge. Every day at 10.02 on my phone, an alarm goes off. And this is in response to Luke 10.2. And I just say a simple prayer when the alarm goes. You say it in English. Here I am, Lord, send me. If you're willing to do that and say that to God every day, you'll get to the point where you'll want to turn off the alarm sometimes because <laughs> he'll send you so many divine appointments. He is looking for those of us who, will, who are willing to get out there, even, even if people spit at you or curse you. doesn't matter. They're not, it's not you personally. It's, it's Jesus who they're doing that to. And just but that pray for them, but Amen. love them. That will change your life. Yes, it will. Hallelujah. So that we invite you to join with us and, and to pray for the Jewish people that, that God would continue to open their eyes uh, and soften their hearts. And also, if you would like to, to partner with us, you can make a difference. We live in an, a unique time. We've never seen this before. And prophecies are being fulfilled right before our eyes. And we can all be part of it. I'd just like to say from the, the first uh, uh, meeting that we had this morning, many, many joined with us to, to partner with us on a, a regular basis. And that's what really blesses us the most and really helps us the most is if you can give on a regular basis. And even out of a checking account, because that, that is the least... Um, uh, you know, like when they give with a credit card, they have their fees. PayPal has their fees. It's basically free that way. So if you have like a, a check and you write void on there or a deposit slip and you would like uh, to put the amount that you'd like to give on a monthly basis, we can take that and start a partnership with us. And you're in complete control of it. You can start it when you want. You can stop it when you want. Um, you can increase it or decrease it as the Lord would lead. Uh, and also you can go to our website. We have the information up here or PayPal. But the important thing is, is remember that this is where your tithing goes. So this, this is your home here. But, but if God is speaking to you, we, I encourage you to do that today. You've got the cards. You can hand them to us in the back as, as you go out. But if you have questions, come and talk with us. God bless you. And if, and if you make a donation today to the ministry, please come back, take a booklet or a CD or something. We'll be in the back We want to bless you. Amen. Super. I trust you've uh, appreciated the ministry.
today. You know, I'm one of those persons, uh, I, I love coming to church, I love worshiping God, but it doesn't have to be the same thing all the time. I mean, that's the way I feel about it. I, mean, we, I, I think some of these days we're going to come in. I don't know what we're going to do uh, with, with uh, Chris and Amy. We just may, you know, hold them at Bible point and, and, and make them uh, do the music. We'll just worship. You know, we could do that. Have, have, is that all right? And do you appreciate the hides today? I, I so appreciate them. I was really, really blessed uh, by, uh, by the ministry, and I want to give us an opportunity to now give, so um, you may give to them if you'd like to do that right now, so we'll give you the opportunity, and uh, if you need an offering envelope, you can raise your hand, I sure we'll give you one, and while they are, are doing this, I just wanted to just say that, as I said earlier, uh, our Father taught us, really taught us to love the Jewish people. He, he thought that every Christian should love the Jewish people, and of course, uh, I, I'm a very, very strong um, uh, supporter of Israel. I, I really, really do, and uh, I absolutely love Israel. Um, I, I'm not a political animal. I'm not that. I don't like it. I think it's divisive, and I try to uh, get all Christians to be kingdom and not so political. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm thinking about the Jewish people, and as you're giving your gift, and uh, when you let me know, let me know. Give me a signal there. But. Uh, I was saying in the first service that we owe so much, and this is what my father would, would uh, just inculcate into us, and uh, by his constant teachings. And then uh, one day I was in my office, and the Lord told me that that um, that I was receiving uh, benefits from the Jewish people, and that I received their their blessings, and I should be kind to their children. And well, that was really big. I should be kind to their children and generous to their children. And so that has stayed with me as well. I was thinking about the Jewish people, how they've given so much to us. They are the only people group who, uh, it, for, for centuries, uh, that had a covenant with God. Uh, can you imagine? Every other people group, every other nation on the whole planet did not have a covenant with God. They had a covenant with God. They were the only pe people group, the only nation of people who um, uh, had the law. So they were the only one. They were the only one who had the oracles of God, the sayings of God. And uh, th they gave us the Messiah, Jesus. They gave us his, his birth. They gave us his death. A and they also will give us his coming. In, in, the, in the sense that when, when they begin to know who Jesus is and begin to mourn and cry, and plead. The Bible, Zechariah said, they will look on him whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him. It's going to be great mourning, and, and, you know, not the kind of mourning like we go, no, like, ah, you know, yelling. I mean, screaming. It's going to be, it's going to be heart-wrenching. And when they do that, it's like Jesus is going to say, I can't sit here. And he, he comes off his throne, and he comes. You know, that's how I, I, I view that. And amen. Amen. We have many examples in the scriptures of the Jewish people's significance. And one is in 2 Samuel chapter 19 when Absalom had come against David. He had come against David and his own daddy and was going to wrest the throne from his dad. So David did what I call a strategic retreat because David never ran from the enemy. He did a strategic retreat because he didn't want bloodshed in Israel, in, Ju in uh, J uh, Jerusalem. And f finally, when uh, they had defeated Absalom's army, uh, they were standing there, and, and uh, the tribe of, of, uh, of Judah did not come and uh, welcome David back as king. And he said, well, look, you're, like, you're my... Huh, let me read it quickly. He says... Now all the people, 2 Samuel 19, uh, 9, now all the people were in a dispute throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, the king saved us from the hand of our enemies. He delivered us from the hand of the Philistines, and now he has fled from the land because of Absalom. But Absalom, whom we anointed over us, has died in battle. Now therefore, why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? So King David sent to Zadok and Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, 
David says, say these words. Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house? Why are you the last? Since the words of all Israel have come to the king to his very house. You're my brethren. You're my bone and my flesh. Why then are you the last to bring back the king? And when I read this, I think about Jesus saying, Hey, all these Gentiles are crying and saying, Come, Lord Jesus, why are you the last, Israel? Why are you the last? You're my bone. You're my flesh. So we have, we have a, a, I, I believe, a, a calling, a, or there should be a prompting in us to say, Let's do everything we can. And of course, I'm going to say this. If I must apologize, I'll apologize. But I always say, let's make them jealous. We don't make them jealous by doing foolish things. But we make them jealous by, by doing everything Jesus gave us to do. That's how we do it. And, and they will recognize this is their Messiah. This was their promised one before it was out. So thank you so very much. Are we, are we finished? We can give, take the offering. And uh, I'll, I'll sit down and um, we'll come back and make Brother James. Thank you, Brother James. Amen. 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 Wonderful. So the Lord can do anything but what? Fail. Right. He's not going to fail in uh, blessing you and delivering you from all things. I'm going to ask the Hyde to come back, but uh, we're going to give our, our blessing. But I want her to do, as a matter of fact, I'm going to let you do the whole thing. Oh. Is that okay? Oh. Okay, you, you want to do the English? English? You do, do the English, my version? Sure. It's the DGL version. And then I'll do the Hebrew, because that the... might be a little hard for you all. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Would you all stand? 
You appreciate being here today? I hope you do. Yeah, it's wonderful, right? Oh, wow, wow. 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 So we're going to leave now. I want to thank everybody who has made this possible today, all our ushers and greeters and, and our television people, our camera people, directors. Thanks to all of you up there. And wonderful praise team, a great praise team, amazing praise team, all the musicians and the vocalists. Thank you so very, very much. Now, did I miss somebody? Help me. I, I, they were my first ones. The gr- ushers and greeters were my first ones. Did I miss anybody? Okay, and I want to thank the Hides for being here. Thank you so much, so Brother that, Richard. So I asked Brother Richard, where, where did you grow up in Texas? He said, Plainview. I said, my wife, we were in Israel many years ago with our children. My children said, Dad, I can't believe you'll just let us go out on the streets in Israel. Yeah, I, I guess, I said, you know, God protects people like us. And so, sure. so anyway, uh, and, and my wife met somebody from Freer, Texas. Uh, <laughs> She said, Don, they're not Jewish. They're from Freer. Well, you can be Jewish and be from Freer. Yeah, it's true. It's hard, but you can do it. It's hard, but you can do it. Is it time to be blessed? And we're going to bless each other by doing our 360 and just bless the people of God. Repeat after me. And afterwards, our sister Carolyn is going to give this in Hebrew. Isn't that great? Can you imagine what it's going to be like when we're all together? Paul says, boy, that, that that's going to be like no other time. Paul says. And we'll all be speaking Hebrew because that's the only language God doesn't need to translate. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to have to tell my Hispanic, my Hispanic brothers and sisters, it is not Espanol. They, they no. believe it's Espanol. It says, el, el idioma del cielo. That's what they always tell me. That's el, el idioma del cielo. I said, no, Hebreo. Hebreo. Amen. Oh, wow. Okay. But okay, everybody who speaks Spanish here, you have to raise your hands with the rest of us. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord be gracious. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you his peace. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Now listen to the, in, in Hebrew. Yevarech <laughs> Shalom. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we bless you from out of Zion. Shalom. You're dismissed, everybody. We love you. Come back and see us at the table. And if you made a donation, please take something so we can bless you.